this talk is about uh, is presenting what we have worked on in terms of producing some tools for economic research. And as you will see throughout the talk, essentially our contribution contribution is towards pushing the limits that economic researchers have currently by providing them with computation power and with more advanced tools. Me as a computer scientist, I'm a computer scientist, uh, I observe that there are these limitations that people doing modeling <coughs> or people doing implementation key. And in, in, in the economics area, what seemed obvious to me was that, well, there is a lack of information propagation in the structures that make up your model. So for instance, if the model is too big, it's gonna be hard to propagate information to all the components that you have in the system. Also, uh, many times complexity is sacrificed because of various reasons, mostly I don't have time, I'm not interested in it, it's too complicated. Uh, and <coughs> like for those who do applied economic research, they need data and they need powerful tools. And I mean, given constraints of being graduate student or professor, you kind of need to publish papers quickly and uh, get things going. So you don't have time to spend too much on these issues. So why, why is the Computation Institute involved? So like I said, I'm a computer scientist and computer science is also all about resource management, except that Computer science deals with very simple resources like memory and disk and network and processor and they are completely obedient to what I tell them to do. Which is not the case for economics where you have independent agents who follow their own uh, goals and uh, try to maximize their creative functions. And you start building on these components you can end up with various very complex and very powerful examples. So in, in the case of Computer science, I mean, all these examples are really useful. I mean, hugely complex, hugely powerful, hugely useful. I was wondering, well, maybe I can apply some computer science design techniques or some tools or <coughs> anything that we already know from this field, apply to economics and get much more powerful and realistic economic models. So, essentially, just to summarize, what we do is push the scalability limits of your research. <coughs> That's what we really do. I, I'm not coming up with new economic models. I'm not coming up with new utility functions. I just apply them and try to push them where you hit the limits. So what would be the vision? I mean, live incremental research, so same as in computer science, where some guy does some research, you kick quickly apply it and get, get a huge improvement. So we should be able to somehow apply also economic research results to the, to the whole field of economy or to the big economic models that we would like to have in place. Right? So, so essentially this means that we just add more variables, endogenize them to, to, the, to, to a big economic model, to a more realistic model. So I think, I mean, in general, I, I mean, I, here I invite you to make comments. Uh, the way to build a big and realistic and useful economic model is to define the economic variables as a state of the economic model, and then we use these research results to connect them and make sure that when, when they are all together, they still produce an outcome that you respect from the economy that you're building. And while doing that, make sure that future research still comes in and uses, I mean, can be applied readily to what has been done. You can see from this and you can see from the, the other points that I made that they, it seems like there's a lot of work to automate, a lot of research to, to make sure that pieces are connected together and that they work together and uh, all this need for automation mm -hmm. and for, for a system that is as a platform for, for economic research needs a lot of work from people like me who are not really researchers, I mean are not economic researchers, 
properties such as the systems and computers, science, and other aspects. So, pretty much, I mean, this is the pretty general statement, and it's my observation that economy is pretty much well down to some optimization. So, you already know that. And <coughs> that's a good thing because uh, there are so many optimization functions and algorithms and everything available that you can readily make this up. But these models that you work with and what you model are pretty much, in many cases, non linear. So that kind of breaks the nice uh, methods, optimization methods, and forces us to do numerical simulations. So we're also somewhat doing numerical methods. So also, Last but not least, which is a, actually this should be the most, most important one from my perspective, this is what I really offer. We offer these high performance parallel platforms for you to use for the execution of the models. But essentially what we do, I mean, with respect to these things, we look at some research, we divide it into blocks, we treat the optimization procedure especially because it's uh, something that we can't really touch too much. Uh, and then, in general, try to work such, try to rearrange the application such that it's usable in the future. I use this tool, which allows me to run the reorganized, reassemble models in parallel on, on uh, lots of computational resources. I expressed the workflow for all these, and then just said run, and it ran, and uh, it spit out the results later. And essentially, the speed up that I got was five times over what he had done previously. So essentially, this is what I did: make his software run on those resources and get some speed up, just because of the parallelism. I had 52 parallel instances of the problem here, so I mean, that's just this block is 52 times speed up but because overall the were dependencies. And also because of some availability of the resources to sense this, they would slow down to five times speed up. So here I'm just showing you what what that Swift tool generated automatically this graph. So I wrote the dependency for us, which is like this much. So like we have the pieces from Victor. And then the workflow, the, the, the Swift tool just generated automatically this workflow and ran it for me. And I didn't even have to worry about what comes first and next and all that. He just ran it for me, I got the outputs, and I'm just showing here some cases of doing structural estimation for, for this model. So essentially, you need a lot of computation power, and these tools allow you to automatically take advantage of the existing resources. So what they do is they run things for you. You define things properly and they run them for you. So you go away for a week and then when you come back to have the US economy fixed. Essentially the problem is that currently he uses a method, right? He uses f min and then the f min objective functions has his, has his uh, expressive function and that takes a lot. And he kind of needs to break away from evaluating that expressive function and he needs to speed it up. So I said, okay, I can parallelize the function because the, stru the structure of the function allows me to parallelize it, but I can parallelize it outside MATLAB, not inside. So we are looking at ways of how to uh, connect back that externally parallelized and sped up function to the solver which does the maximum accurate estimation which is part of MATLAB, so that's this case. We have had significant ongoing effort, I mean, you've seen how much stuff we have done. We just started a year and a half ago. And actually doing this kind of work and pushing out the research so that it's more usable, reusable, useful, anything you want to 